Hello, everyone. Lynn Hunsaker here, talking with you today about a hot topic, ease of work. Not to be confused with laziness or easy work. Far from it. Ease of work is all about expectations. When a worker's reality is less than their expectations, they look at it as a poor experience. When their realities match their expectations, they look at it as a good experience. So ease of work being a major contributor to great employee experience can be summarized as workers' realities compared to their expectations. I'd really like to uh, ask two things of you to share. First of all, uh, where are you coming from? It's always interesting to know participants' locations. And secondly, what do you believe is the cure for ease of work uh, maladies that we're facing today? So looking forward to seeing what you uh, post there and I'll comment on that. But what is the opposite of ease of work? It's negative surprises and distrust. What is a key contributor to negative surprises is dropped commitments. Uh, this happens often when uh, what was promised isn't delivered, either because uh, things got in the way, we didn't uh, communicate the, the change in course, um, maybe there were assumptions involved in uh, understanding the true intentions. What are the intended outcomes or the intended uh, actions of each party? So negative surprises and distrust are really a two-way street where both parties have a role to play. And uh, having that clarity of communication, listening and asking questions is so important. Distrust, a major contributor there, is siloed actions. Our actions are siloed often when we have myopia or tunnel vision, usually in the course of manageability, keeping things manageable when, when we're undergoing a lot of change or maybe uh, we're taking up others' workload. Um, and when we have a, too much of a focus on the task rather than the big picture, recognizing that others rely upon us. We have interdependencies with, with others. This always brings to mind the party game of Jenga, where someone removes something, takes a, a shortcut, and uh, it puts the whole uh, thing in, in jeopardy. It's very dangerous. At the heart of all of this is mixed visions and mixed motivations. This happens when uh, we don't have a match between the walk and the talk. When personal agendas uh, uh, rise above the greater good. Um, when short-term actions or goals aren't in alignment with long-term goals. And whenever we don't consider the context or communicate the context of decisions uh, and goals, so I see David here. Thank you. Uh, always good to see you from Atlanta. Um, and uh, keeping colleagues involved in improving procedures and processes, I think, is a tremendous um, recommendation, David, for how do we solve the opposite of ease of work. <laughs> um, that That's really such an important point because when people are self-defining what's working for them, you're getting a, a built-in solution to these, uh, these challenges that we're faced with so much today. Thanks for that, David. Glad to see you, Rex, from Sri Lanka and uh, El Arabi from Morocco. It's always fun to see uh, people across the globe in these sessions. Well, today we have a, a major thing, everybody knows that everyone's struggling with ease of work. And this study was very eye-opening to me from ADECO. It's the 2021 uh, study on um, resetting normal, defining the new world of work. And what I found so interesting is that you can see here that it's representing leaders, managers, and non-managers, 20 to 35% of them any level are struggling with effective communication between colleagues. 
uh, mental well-being and physical well-being, job motivation, um, a sense of team culture and morale, and so on. And when you think, of, I really challenge you to uh, think about mixed motivations and visions, drop commitments and siloed actions. When you're looking through these reports, any, anything that you're seeing in this, uh, this domain, as are these the roots of these, these uh, problems? Could we perhaps solve them if we could um, address ease of work in this light? Another thing about this study from ADECO was that um, managers at all levels, from top management, to middle management, to um, managers of uh, individual contributors, are struggling with onboarding new staff to the team or to the business, um, identifying when staff may be struggling with mental well-being, well -being or overwork, workload, struggling with supporting them in uh, the pressures of work, uh, career development, childcare, and um, focusing on the business goals. So everyone is really having a hard time, no matter where you are in an organization. And ease of work is is uh, being uh, challenged in, to the greater degree that we've ever seen in our lifetimes. Um, this one here is the uh, Edelman Trust Barometer, just published in 2022, January. Uh, this particular slide comes from a special report on the belief-driven employee from 2021. And this is asking people who are working in a corporation who are uh, considering changing their uh, employment situation, 59% uh, said that they were looking for a better fit of their values compared to just 31% who were uh, concerned about pay, benefits, and career advancement. So it's really important for us to stop and listen and ask good questions of each other and get beyond our assumptions, taking the time to be curious and to help uh, co-create things so that we uh, uncover these, uh, these big challenges and fit for value and lifestyle that are much more at the far forefront than we've ever seen before. Um, yeah, we have a comment before I go to this next slide. Uh, I wanted to, to uh, thank Dinesh Chandra for this comment at the uh, Global and in, in Integrative Wellness Network. We're focused on these issues. Thanks for sharing the study. Always good to see you, Dinesh, uh, anytime. Uh, really great insights there. So wonderful to see you focusing on those. And I think most companies are trying. Here at Clear Action Continuum, we did a study of our own and we asked executives at uh, the manager, director, and vice president level, um, what is it that keeps you from being successful in your organization? We were specifically looking at marketing organizations at that time uh, because of all the customer intelligence that they bring into the company, the uh, promises that they make to the outside world, and how that affects the customer brand gap or trust of, of companies and trust within marketing organizations. So we found that consistency to intentions was a common thread across uh, the reasons for success or uh, challenge within an organization. And this is really about driving commitments making clear value propositions among both parties. Whenever you have a new job, new assignment, new meeting, new process, new policy, there's a value proposition in there. It's essentially saying, if you do X, I'll give you Y. So that, uh, that stands from the employee's or worker's viewpoint. If you give me pay or you provide me uh, opportunities for growth or if you uh, are a contributor to the lifestyle and the values that I hold dear, I will give you a certain amount of my time and energy and so forth. And on the other hand, the employer manager making the, the value proposition. So having clarity on both sides is of key to consistency, consistency to intentions. And 
uh, one of the things I love so much is what uh, Don Peppers uh, writes in his book called Extreme Trust, proactively doing the right things right. Meaning not just going with the flow, but taking an extra effort to uh, anticipate and design things so that commitments are more easily met and uh, the value proposition is, is uh, honored uh, according to what people originally um, interpreted as. And having consistency is really at the heart of um, driving commitment. When you follow through, uh, when you uh, circle back to what people committed to at the end of meetings, at the next meeting, and um, being consistent in the way that you uh, that you honor things, that you reflect, and that you uh, reward. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. But another key to uh, ease of work is respecting interdependencies. And this means having creativity, but within boundaries where we are other oriented to the same or greater degree than we're self oriented. This is the key to trust. Um, and taking actions that are de siloed, that's a, a phrase that I, a term that I coined, uh, de siloed meaning that. Uh, you're considering, you're, you're checking assumptions, you're considering um, that you're not just doing something in a vacuum. It's not just a task. There are other people who are dependent upon it. There's other others who are interested in the outcomes of it or affected by uh, the outcomes, not only in your team, but other parts of the company, and certainly also partners and customers. There's a, a domino effect of most everything we do. So having frequent check-ins, um, building a curious, uh, a, a, a strength personally for your curiosity as well as uh, in your own department culture, being really curious about how do you see things? What do you think would be uh, good? How are you affected by this? Um, what, what are some of the possible domino effects that we might want to plan for? Uh, really respecting those interdependencies. And then third, we found that aligned motivations is a key to ease of work, having everyone on the same page. And how do we do this? One of the aspects is listening with your heart first and then listening with your mind. So what is the person intending? And then what, is, what are they you know, saying in the content of what they... So uh, we need to strengthen these muscles I mentioned before, uh, building a, a culture of curiosity. This applies to everything around us. Uh, why have we always done it this way? Are we doing it just because we, we think somebody thinks it's a good idea or because there's a personal agenda or because it's uh, founded in, in the intelligence we have from employee feedback, customer feedback, partner feedback, those who we really rely on to fuel our growth. and probably most importantly is transparency. It's there. Uh, people read between the lines. They see the uh, through the words that we say to understand our motivations. Uh, sh no amount of sugarcoating, uh, sidestepping, or avoidance can, uh, can prevent people from seeing the truth. So transparency is there, and the more that we respect that and honor it by being straightforward, giving whatever information we have, being uh, showing our vulnerability, that we're uh, human, that we're, we regret cer certain things, you know, being uh, very straightforward with, with um, all of that can have a huge impact on ease of work. I see a comment here from Marios Vlachos in Greece. Thank you, Marios. Uh, the pandemic has accelerated digital transformation and brought years of change. Is digital adoption a crucial factor for ease of work? Well, that's a good point because normally we think, what can we do to uh, automate some of these things so that we don't have as many headaches? And sure, I think e digitalization can be very uh, influential in making things less tedious. But as we make things 
more automated, we actually accentuate the things that I've been pointing out as the common causes or common uh, symptoms of uh, pores of work. So even when we have a strong digitalization uh, initiative and achievements for employees, we're finding that um, there's even a greater visibility and accentuation on all of the human interaction needs. Uh, glad to see this comment from Gloria. Um, checking in from Chicago. Achieving interdependencies, alignment, and transparency across team members and stakeholders is an ongoing and evolving process, never one and done. Absolutely. There are always shifts in our, the forces on a company from the outside, as well as in the inside. And as things evolve, uh, as we uh, go through uh, quarter by quarter, year by year, we're, we're uh, uh, in a constant uh, cycle of, of uh, this type of, of um, habits. It's going to be more important, I think, in the 2020s and onward than we've ever seen before to emphasize ease of work as we're describing it here. Thank you, Gloria. So uh, the Edelman barometer also suggested in 2022 through a regression analysis, here are five things that will increase trust. And I think it applies not only to companies, but also from at each managerial level. First and foremost is information quality, being truthful, being straightforward, having the facts, um, checking assumptions, making sure we're not passing on fake news. This has to do with aligned motivations, uh, having a common vision, a shared vision and shared motivations. And by uh, excelling in inf information quality, we can actually increase trust by 3%. The second area is holding others accountable. And this will increase trust by two and a half percent. This uh, goes with our area, uh, the key contributor for to ease of work, of respecting interdependencies, holding others accountable. But it's also affected by con consistency to intentions. Um, and then third, third key is uh, communication and transparency. The fourth key is um, exerting power effectively, which is uh, an element of respecting interdependencies. And the fifth key is getting results, which of course is consistency to intentions, driving those commitments. Um, thank you for, for your comments, really appreciate that. And so I think you're recognizing that all of this is a team sport. Ease of work is not just something that you can do by yourself, but it requires everyone in your whole department to, to get on the same page with all of this and to really strive to make these things part of their personal strengths as well as uh, embedded within the way that you do things in your department and across your enterprise. This is a, a team sport that contributes to ease of business. The more that we have ease of work or the, the less that we have ease of work, it will uh, affect our customers and our partners in the degree to which they have ease of doing business with us. And that is a sign of magnetic attraction for sustained organic growth, meaning that as we increase ease of work and ease of doing business, we're organically growing uh, revenue, uh, recommendations, engagement, and so on for a lifetime value without than uh, so much need for advertisement and enticement. Also, the sustained organic growth is achieved through lower costs by uh, creating greater ease of work and ease of doing business. Next week, I'm going to be talking about ease of business and the, those three keys we uncovered in our research as well. How can you learn more about this? Well, I actually have eight detailed recommendations especially about listening and asking questions and uh, being 
uh, more trustworthy or being viewed as as more more trust trusting and um, trustable. This is in my article that was published just last week at customerthink.com slash author slash clear action. And I really recommend that uh, you take a look at our experience value exchange, which actually gives you uh, badges as you achieve uh, certain levels of being able to influence others in accountability, alignment, and agility uh, organization-wide. Taking the opportunity as CX, CS, EX, and marketing teams to use our intelligence of the market and employees to shape what's happening in other departments in the company. So vital to being a, a great uh, ease of work entity. And just to give you a quick idea of what people share, what they exchange in the value exchange, you can see that uh, people pr participate in events, uh, Q&A, uh, providing templates, presentations, all kinds of things that uh, can enrich us uh, collectively. So if you'd like to have a personal tour, uh, message me on LinkedIn, Lynn Hunsaker. Also take a look at our free FAQs and playbooks at clearaction.com, giving a lot of advice in the same areas that I've been talking about. And we have a, a special, uh, especially uh, appropriate for today's topic, customer-focused communication course, uh, that helps both ease of work and ease of doing business. It's for internal customers as well as external customers' communication. Uh, the more that we are uh, excelling in internal smoothness, internal uh, functionality instead of dysfunctionality, the more that we're going to be able to uh, reflect that externally. By the way, um, most of these courses are also included in the value exchange. So thank you today for joining me on this important topic of ease of work. Next week, I'll be talking about ease of doing business. And I look forward to your continued uh, comments about this and questions that you might want to send my way. Best wishes to you in ease of work. And looking forward to seeing you next week.